The Bronco is back, baby. All right, there's the larger Bronco and then the smaller Bronco Sport, and that's what we have today, and they're very different. Let's get in and take it for a drive. So a lot of people are excited about the big Bronco. Yeah. That's the one designed to go after the Jeep Wrangler. That's not this. No. This is the Bronco Sport, which is based on the Ford Escape. So Andrea, what's under the hood? So it actually comes with two engines. The one that we are reviewing is on the Badlands trim. It's a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with an eight speed automatic transmission. It's got 245 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque. Now all other trims get a smaller engine. It's a 1.5 liter EcoBoost three cylinder turbo with an eight speed automatic transmission, but it has good power, 181 horsepower and 100 and 90 pound feet of torque. And Zach, you always say that this 1.5 liter three cylinder from Ford is a good engine and that it's a popular one for Ford. A lot of people buy it. And all the trims come with all wheel drive, which is great. And uh, the, this two liter engine is only available on the top trim. All other trims get the 1.5 liter three cylinder. Now they have been doing three cylinder engines at Ford for quite a while. I have never driven it in the uh, Escape or this, and we always give us the top engine, which yeah. we like, but it would be nice to actually drive what other people get to drive. The good news is it does have good torque, so that's good news. So still to come is fuel economy, a price pause, the hot topic, questions, coffee, cars, for your consideration. The list is long, friends. We cover a lot of <laughs> these reviews. Around. So before all of that comes up, time to get into our key standard features. The Ford Bronco Sport base model comes with 4x4 capability, safari style roof, lip up rear glass, manual lift gate, LED tail lamps, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, an 8 inch touchscreen, 4.2 inch instrument cluster, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, terrain management system with 5 GOAT modes, and 17 inch wheels. All right, Andrea, what do we have to put it in? We have to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit the notification bell, it really supports the channel. You'll be notified when videos drop and then you can watch them. And an added bonus only found here on the Motormouth YouTube <laughs> channel is if you do hit the notification bell, little elves will wake up every morning and clean your car. It'll be spotless when you go outside. The elves guarantee it. Mm. Also, for all of our different segments we have, you need to follow Andrea on Instagram. It's Motormouth underscore Andrea. For me, it's Motormouth underscore auto, and the links are in the description below. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. So there's been a ton of hype around this Bronco. We're waiting for the big brother to come, but for now we've got the baby Bronco, and you know what? It really does live up to the hype. I don't know. I think a lot of people are waiting for the big rugged one. This one is, they added it on as Bronco in name yeah. to try and piggyback on the success or yeah, it's already a lot of orders for the big Bronco. And I'm coming into this thinking, I don't know what this is all about, but the more I drive this thing, I'm really warming to it. I really like it. I think they did a great job with the exterior. It's rugged looking. It's boxy. I like how they put the Bronco lettering on the front and the back. I think it's super cool. This reminds me of a bigger Jeep Renegade. So the boxy Jeep Renegade, mm -hmm. now this is bigger. It competes in one class up. It has a very similar look with a flat roof, boxy. Even the way you look out over the front hood reminds me of that product. And they're going right up the grill of Jeep. Yeah, right up the grill and why not? Jeep sells like crazy, so why can't Ford get in on the action and sell this Bronco? Yeah, and they have a history obviously with the Bronco name and a lot of people will say, well Bronco Sport, as I mentioned, they're just adding it on, but you yeah. know what? I'll have to remind you, they did have a vehicle called the Bronco 2, which was the smaller version of the Bronco. So they have done this in the past. It's not without precedent. Yes, should we get into the competition? Absolutely. For your consideration, four categories and four vehicles for you to consider. Now the main competitor to this Bronco Sport is pretty obvious. It's the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk with a starting price of roughly $37,500. It comes with a 3.2 liter Pentastar V6, nine speed automatic transmission, 271 horsepower and 239 pound-feet of torque. 
Our next category is the best-selling compact crossover. It goes to the Toyota RAV4 all-wheel drive. The base model LE trim starts at almost $31,000. It has 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. Now the showroom alternative at Ford is the vehicle this Bronco Sport is based on. It's the Ford Escape, but it has cleaner lines and a more sophisticated exterior. It has a starting price with all-wheel drive of just over $30,000. And just like the Bronco, it's available with a 1.5-liter three-cylinder EcoBoost engine or the larger two-liter EcoBoost engine. And our final category goes to the brand known for all-wheel drive capability. It's Subaru with the Forester. It has a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine with 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. It comes with a starting price of almost $29,000. So there are four vehicles for you to consider. So still to come is Questions Coffee and Cars from Instagram, but we choose one and expand on it. It's called our Hot Topic. What is it this week, Andrea? What does the Bronco Sport do or have that the Ford Escape doesn't and does it do it well? The fact that they have two utilities of the same rough size in the Ford showroom is yeah. just a stroke of marketing genius <laughs> because they're gonna say, oh, you don't like that Ford Escape? Well, look at this. Yeah, and I mean, they look very different. The Ford Escape is very sophisticated looking and this is boxy and sporty. And I think that people are really going to like this one better. Well, yeah, there's a place for both. Uh, I think that this one has, to back to the question at hand here, how is it different? Well, they did make it more capable. Now, it's yeah. not going to be as capable as the big Bronco with a body on frame design, but here's the news flash, Andrea. Most people don't take their vehicles off road. No, I know, I know. But, you know, if you want to, it is available. The Escape and the Bronco have their own sets of drive modes. You know, for the Escape, it's more normal and sport modes, but this one has the all-terrain modes. Goat, and goat so, modes. Yeah, goat modes. So this is very different than what you would see in the Escape. So goat means go over any terrain and they have all kinds of different additional modes. They have the crawl mode, uh, which is the low speed crawling mode and yeah. rock mode and all those things. It's basically traction and stability control using the all wheel drive system to get the power down. But this has the added advantage of having a dual clutch rear differential system yeah. and a different suspension system that's more rugged. You know what's interesting? Um, they have a system on this. It's actually designed not really for going hard off-roading at slow speeds. It's really, this vehicle is designed for higher speed sort of gravel roads, mm -hmm. which I think is exactly what it's intended for. Potholes. Yeah, they call it the Haas system. High performance off-road stability suspension. Mm. So what they've done is they've made the dampening uh, stiffer, but they made the other components in the suspension softer. Okay, so when you go over bumps at higher speed, it allows the suspension to move more, more articulation. So it's designed if you lived, you know, we're somewhere with a gravel road. This Badlands trim actually has a one inch suspension lift um, for things like that, potholes or gravel roads. Now you had a lot of questions about this. Oh Let's... my goodness, so many questions and all really good questions, it was hard to choose. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. How is the handling? Does it feel top heavy? Also, do you feel this would perform better as a V6? Love your reviews. Not top heavy at all. This handles so well. What a comfortable drive and plenty of power. Doesn't need a V6 at all. Yeah, this engine actually made uh, its debut in the Range Rover Evoque. I remember the first time I drove the Evoque, I was like, mm. wow, what an engine. I'm a big fan of the two liter EcoBoost, so this thing is not lacking power. No, not at all. A very nice looking SUV now. How well does it compete with the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk? It competes really well. First off, it does have a little less horsepower, but more torque than the Trailhawk. The Trailhawk does have a V6 engine, the 3.2 liter Pentastar, which is a great engine, but you don't feel any sort of lack of power in this Bronco at all, do you? No, and the suspension has been upgraded with this. What they did was they changed um, the damping rates in the front and the back compared to the regular Escape. They also 
have more travel in the suspension. The biggest difference between the Trailhawk and the Cherokee and this is the rear differential. So you have a locking rear differential yeah. with the Trailhawk. With this, you have what they call a dual clutch rear differential. They claim it can do the same sorts of things. We're not going off-road with it today. It can shift up to 100% of the power to just the right or left wheel in the back, mm -hmm. the available torque to get you out of conditions. And both of them have many trail management systems yeah. using electronics. So if you're looking for an off-road capable small utility, those are the two you're going to want to look at. Yes. Hi, Andrea and Zach. I'm looking to buy the Badland shortly. I have three quick questions. Is this the same engine as in the Ford Fusion? Yes. The Ford Fusion has a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Is the Bang and Olufsen sound system worth it? I would say yes. I'm always... I love it. Yeah, it sounds fine, but I, I, I always say people, you got to try it yourself. I mean, what's good to me might not be good to you. Oh, by the way, it's not Bang & Olufsen, it's B&O. B&O, yeah. Yeah, because if you want B.O., that's what they're offering. <laughs> Between Navy, Area 51, and the orange-yellow color, which would you choose? Um, I don't think I would pick the orange-yellow color. Maybe a little bit too bright for me. Navy is good, but I actually really like this one that we're driving, the Area 51. Color so personal. Same with the sound system. Plus, I would have to see them in person. Just mm. picking them on a computer, forget it, especially because I'm colorblind. I got to tell you one thing, though. This thing, this color, doesn't show the dirt. No. It's really good for that. It's like a blue color with a gray undertone. Yeah, it's nice. It is really sharp. Are we all done? We're all done. All right. If you want to get a question in, you have to follow Andrea on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. The link is also below if you can't remember that. And now because you hear the music, it's time for nightlife. talk a little bit about this interior. I think that Ford has done a really great job with it. We have been in a few of their vehicles as of late, the Explorer being one of them. And uh, the fit and finish wasn't great, was it? No, we liked the vehicle. We just yeah. thought the interior was a kind of a hard fail. Uh, I will say the Escape that this is based on, yeah. uh, that interior is pleasant. N nothing fancy, no. but pleasant. Uh, this one, I think, they've improved. And you know what vehicle is still to come that we haven't driven yet mm -hmm. is the new Mach-E. Yes. Apparently, the interior on that is first rate. So Ford is finally starting to turn the corner, and you can see it in this. Yeah. One great thing about this vehicle, it has all these different compartments for storage. You've got storage on the side of the seats. Yeah, you've got phones, yeah. yeah, you've got a zipper storage compartment behind the seats. It comes with an eight inch touch screen and that is the biggest that you can get. It's not integrated into the dash. But, but it looks it looks the right size for this dash. Yeah. Like when we had the Explorer, it looked so rinky dink. Yes. Uh, Fisher pricey. This one it suits the size of the car. So this Badlands trim comes with a 6.5 inch instrument cluster. The base model comes with a 4.2 inch. And one other nice thing is it has this rubberized interior for the floor and for the cargo area. It's an easy wipe down. It's not hose down. No. No, we don't no. want to confuse you with that. No. So it's meant to get your dog in the back and your kids in and out. Remember when we had the kids in soccer, their cleats would always yes. put mud all over the floor. Yeah, so now nice. you can vacuum it and wipe it out easily. Ford says the cloth seats with the base model are very easy to wipe clean along with these leather seats in the Badlands trim. You get this ebony and kind of a tan interior Oh, I thought we were going to sing ebony and ivory. <laughs> ebony. Are you going to sing? And I'm not. Ivory. We're together. In perfect. <laughs> Harmony. I think anyway, we just hit a new threshold for yeah, dorkiness. Yeah. All right. Now, what I about? I want to be a part of that. <laughs> so, what about the tailgate? I like the fact that it's a dual tailgate and it's got a secret hidden thing in there, right? I know. It's got a bottle opener. You know, maybe you're gonna have a little picnic. But the the flip up tailgate is a kind of a cool thing. If you've got a dog and you're parked somewhere and you want to have the window open yeah. for them to get some fresh air, that is a nice thing. It's great. So when it comes to the moonroof, it doesn't come on the base model at all. 
each of the trims come with packages that have the moon roof. So this Badlands trim, for example, has a $3,000 package <coughs> and it also <coughs> comes with a wireless charging pad, the B&O stereo system, it's 10 speakers. So you get some added features in it. Well, while you're on it, let's get into the price. Let's do a price pause. There are four models to choose from. The base model is just over $32,000. The Big Bend comes in just over 34,000. The Outer Banks is 37,699 and the Badlands is 40,199. The one that we are reviewing has some extra features and it comes in over $45,000. So I just want to touch on the second row seats a little bit. First off, Ford makes amazing seats. Are they ever comfortable? <laughs> yeah. And I have to say, before I get into the second row, the heating in this vehicle is incredible. When you turn on the heated seats, they get hot, as does the heated steering Absolutely. wheel. Absolutely. I noticed that this morning, too. The cargo space is actually quite good. When it comes to the second row, it's not as big as the Escape, but it's still pretty good. And they, uh, they added in a little picnic table if you mm -hmm. want to order that. I think these skins are kind of gimmicky and going to end up in the corner of your garage, but hey, if that's what you want, go for it. I just think if you're going on a long trip or something, it's gonna hey, end up, it's, it's gonna, kind of fun to it's have. end up in the corner of the garage. <laughs> That's the romantic in me. I guess I just think maybe we would have a picnic. <laughs> have we ever gone on a picnic? No. And you're still married to me. He told me he could dance too. He loved to dance. I already sang what? for you. Do you want me to dance? No, no. I already please, sang for please. you. Ebony Are you going to sing? I'm not. Ivory. He said he could dance. I love to dance. And he goes, I love to dance too. Yeah. After we started dating a while, the dancing. Mm -mm. Okay. It went out the window. Here, guys, this is what you do. You say you love to go for long walks on the beach. <laughs> you love to dance. And uh, yeah, sure, I love to cook and go on picnics. Yeah. And then once you go on a few dates and you got them hooked, that all ends, right, Drea? It did. It did for <laughs> me. Now, speaking of gas, <laughs> what kind of fuel economy are we getting here? The 1.5 liter three cylinder engine gets 10 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and seven on the highway. The two liter four cylinder that we are driving gets 11.1 .1 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 8.9 on the highway. I got a, I got a confession. What's that? I like this. Oh, I like see, it a Zach lot. Zach wasn't too sure about it. I wasn't it. sure about it. I, I thought know. it was going to be kind of like, you know, Bronco light, but it's actually just as a utility to drive every day. I like it. Yeah, so comfortable. And you know what? It has this real vintage vibe to it. I think it's kind of special and we are getting a ton of lux in this thing. That's why you're with me, Drea. <laughs> I got that real vintage vibe. Yeah. So there's been a ton of hype around this Bronco and you know what? It doesn't disappoint. When I first heard we were getting the Bronco Sport, the lighter version of the big Bronco, I thought, eh, am I really going to like it? But the more I drove it, the more I liked it. Most people are not going to take this off-road. It's just another small utility, yeah. but it's a good one. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.